Hey everybody, it's Meredith Miller with Inner Integration and today the topic I have for you is hoovering, how the narcissist sucks you back in. So the term hoovering comes from the brand name vacuum hoover. A vacuum sucks things up. So manipulators like narcissists will try to suck you back after you've gotten out or even after they've discarded you. The goal of hoovering is to use any means necessary to get you under control. They will beg, cry, yell, shame, guilt trip, blame shift, make false accusations, threats, false revelations of the past, generous promises for the future, etc. They will go to all kinds of lengths to pull you back. And the danger is that you might think that things are different now because they said the right thing, you thought that they meant it, it seemed genuine in the moment, but they're actually just going to turn around and do the same thing to you again that they did in the past, only much worse this time. Because once you leave and go back to the abuser, they will punish you for having left. So what does the Hoover look like? The Hoover attempts will resemble the same abuse cycle that you're already familiar with, that sweet, mean, love bombing, devaluation cycle. The difference is that during the Hoover attempts, the manipulator will likely go back and forth in a much shorter time frame. So that time frame could be one week, one day, or even in the same text message. You might notice how they go back and forth in that intermittent reinforcement. So essentially the hoovering process is merely an expedited version of your entire relationship. People often ask, when will the person start to hoover you? Well, that hoover might start the moment you break up with someone. They might already be trying to suck you back and convince you not to do that. It might start later that day, a few hours later, later that night. It might start the next day. It might start next week, next month, next year, years down the road. There is no limit to the time or the lengths that manipulators will go to to try to get you back under control if they are left without a supply source. That's generally when they come back to you. That's usually when they don't want to let you go yet because they haven't yet lined up that new source of supply or they ditched you, they ran off with the new supply, something happened, they lost control of that supply, they tried to get more, then they start going back to their past relationships and that's when they might hoover you. Now if you want to set yourself up for success, you want to block the manipulator from any way of contacting you. Ideally, you would be 100% no contact. However, not everyone does this, and there's a chance that you might get hoovered at some point, even if you do go no contact. Maybe you're thinking, oh, that's so mature. It really doesn't need to come to that. I don't actually need to block that person. Or maybe you think, I'm strong. I'm not going to contact them. Even if they contact me, I'm not going to respond. Or maybe you feel powerful knowing that you could hear from the manipulator and know that they miss you or know that they're hurting or know that things aren't as great as it seemed that they were when they moved on and you're kind of fooling yourself into thinking that you're not going to respond and there's no need to block them. Or maybe you blocked the manipulator from everything and even got a new phone number yet somehow someday they either get a hold of that phone number or they find some other way of contacting you. So knowing what to expect from hoovering and what to do could save you from falling back into more abuse. This is usually how it goes. Test one is sweetness. They start the hoovering process all sweet and seemingly vulnerable, maybe even with a pity ploy. They'll tell you something that you want to hear or they'll act like they're sorry and they can't live without you and it's just so hard without you. In this first test, they're going to try to pull on your heartstrings those strings of compassion and love. If that doesn't work and your boundaries are solid, in other words, you don't budge on your stance of breaking up or you ignore them, etc., they will quickly shift into test number two. Test number two of hoovering is meanness. They'll tell you how you're not good enough. They'll suddenly adopt a 180 degree point of view about something or about you or something about something that happened that they told you earlier in the relationship or even earlier in that texting conversation when they were praising you and being sweet with you and agreeing with you and now they're saying just the opposite. They will degrade you. They will show off their superiority by trying to tell you how they're better than you somehow. They'll often sandwich all that in between phrases like, 
I just want the best for you. Or, I'm only sending you positive vibes. Or, I have the best intentions in my actions. Or, I'm only telling you this because I'm worried about you. And of course, this will piss you off to no end. Or worse yet, it might confuse you into believing them. Do not respond. If your boundaries withstand test number two, then they will move on to test number three. Test number three of the hoovering process is the grand finale. This is when they go after what hurts the most. They go for the jugular. They often know what most matters to you and they will try to destroy it for you. For example, if they know that being a parent and being a good parent is what gives you purpose in life and how much you enjoy that, they'll accuse you of being an awful parent or they'll remind you of some failure that you had in the past in parenting. If they know that your work is what gives your life meaning, then they'll tell you that you're no good at what you do and that you're actually hurting people instead of helping them. And by the way, you can watch a narration of a real life example of that in a video from last year called Leaving the Narcissist Before the Discard. If you're planning on leaving the narcissist, most definitely be prepared for the hoovering. And that hoovering might come the very next day, which is what happened in those text messages. So if you're worried about that, check out that video because you're going to get a lot of insight. I go through and I analyze all the text messages. So this grand finale, this test number three of hoovering, this is also the part where they fabricate stories of things like everybody thinks that you're crazy or everyone says that you're a bad parent, or you're a weirdo, something's wrong with you, right? They're gonna say things like this so that you feel alone and isolated. They'll even say they talk to your friends and families and everybody agrees, but they're usually just fabricating all of this. They're doing this so that you doubt yourself, so that maybe, just maybe, you're gonna feel that false sense of guilt or shame that they want you to feel because when you're in that low vibrational state, that's when you can fall back under their control. When you're in a high, strong, confident, clear state, you are not going to fall into the abuse. So be very careful not to internalize these messages that the manipulator is saying. This is the grand finale test because by now it got so bad that either you got the point that this person is not only not someone that you don't want in your life, but they don't deserve any open channels of communication to you. You're beyond done. Or the manipulator has given up their attempts to suck you back because you're maintaining no contact the entire time. They don't even know if you're getting their messages. So they have to move on to a more reliable supply source. So sometimes we wait for this level of hoovering, for the manipulator to reveal themselves so fully so that we can assure ourselves that we made the right decision to leave. But be careful because if you're hanging on and leaving that channel open up to this point, you're taking a great risk. So three tests, three words, just say no. No response, no reaction, no taking the bait. Block, block, block block. Now, if this is a co-parent, right, if you're raising a child or children with this person, blocking them from texting or calling your cell phone could give you a huge sense of release, relief. Give them an email address. So you have to find out what the laws are in your area, but most legal situations require at least one open chain of communication, and that can be as simple as an email address. That's a lot easier to put away, to deal with when you can, versus the constant bombardment of 20 text messages and rapid fire, or multiple phone calls where they're trying to just get you on the hook. So give them an email address only for which they can use regarding communication about the kids. Now when you read those emails, if it's not exactly about the kids, it has nothing to do with the kids, don't respond whatsoever. If there's something in there about the kids and a whole other mess of something else, ignore the whole other mess of something else and only talk about the kid issues. So it is no contact, slightly modified. You have to keep slight channels open of communication for exchanging the kids and dealing with issues around the kids. But other than that, they have zero other personal access to you. That is for your well-being and for your sanity. 
So I want to talk about some of the most common hoovering traps. First, I'm going to talk about the traps coming from you, from inside of you, and then the traps that the narcissist or other manipulator is trying to use to get you sucked back in. So for you personally, this could just be the loneliness. Like you might feel so much loneliness. Like maybe you have, have the courage to break up with the person or maybe it's even a friend and you really have no one else in your life and you realize how lonely you are and that loneliness drives you to contact them. Like you don't even wait for them to hoover. You contact them or maybe you left that channel open or they got a surprise channel open and somehow a message comes and because you're so lonely you respond. Another one is trying for closure. You know, we all want closure because you got to get that closure to really move on. Unfortunately, you're never going to get that closure with a manipulative person ever. They're never going to allow that. That closure has to come from inside. But if you're still feeling that, oh, maybe I can get closure if I respond to that text, we'll just clear things up and everything will be okay. But that's a mistake. Wanting to rationalize and clear things up. That's another thing kind of related to closure. But just, you know, maybe the narcissist was fabricating these things, false accusations about you. You want to clear your name. You want to clear things up. You want to prove yourself. Maybe you really want an apology. And that's why you open the door to that hoover. Maybe you want revenge. And so you allow the person to come back and you play with that person to try to get revenge. Be very, very careful. You're playing with fire. I wouldn't do it. You know, you're also not creating good karma for yourself. You want to show them that you're doing fine, maybe, right? And so, and then you're moving on and you don't need them. So maybe you respond to their hoovering out of a sense of pride because you kind of want to prove to them that you're doing good and you're moving on. But by the end of that conversation, you're probably going to be flatlined again. The anxiety and the panic of the withdrawal can be out of control in that first month after you quit that person. It's like quitting heroin. It's like quitting one of the worst addictions. The anxiety and the panic can be so overwhelming that you just can't take it and you give in to the Hoover. You feel bad or you feel responsible. So, you know, if you're the people pleaser, the empath, you've taken on too much. You've taken on too much responsibility. You've tried to fix too much in this relationship. You feel bad that things aren't working out and so you respond to that Hoover to try to work things out or to at least try to clear that, but that's a mistake. Maybe you want to rescue them or take care of them, so maybe they hoovered with a pity ploy. Sociopaths will always lead with the pity ploy. So maybe you know it touches that heartstring in you as the people pleaser, codependent, empath, and now you want to rescue them or take care of them. Very dangerous. Maybe you're thinking things will be different now because, wow, these words sound so different. They're saying things they never said before. And he had this time or she had this time to cool off and think about what life was like without me. Maybe now things will be different. They won't be. And finally, you're ashamed to admit that things ended that way. Maybe you're afraid to tell your friends or your family that things ended in this way. And so you go back to try to work things out and it only gets worse. So things that the manipulator could say and do that could entice you to respond to a Hoover. The most famous Hoover, you probably guessed it, I miss you, right? A lot of people fall for that one because it hits your heart, you know? And you probably miss them too, in a way. Dangerous. You're hurting me so much. They'll say things like this, you know, you abandoned me. Some other form of guilt tripping that they're going to use to try to make you feel bad and feel like you did something wrong and you didn't want to hurt them and so you try to make everything okay. Maybe they give you a fake apology. They use all the right words. Maybe you never heard their apology before. Maybe they called you selfish or some other insult that makes you want to prove yourself. Maybe they accuse you of doing something you didn't do and you want to prove yourself. Maybe they spin a 100 degree gaslighting special about a past event now making you the culprit. You know, maybe in the past they admitted that they did something that it wasn't right and they made it up to you. And it's like that never happened because now it was all your fault. Maybe they win you over with gifts and flowers and other gestures. Maybe they finally promise that thing that you've been wanting, that engagement, that marriage, that vacation, a kid, moving, getting a job, doing something responsible that they always said they would and they never did. Or maybe, maybe they finally say, I love you and you believe them. 
So keep in mind that any contact whatsoever with the manipulator is capable of that rubber band effect. It's like no matter how far you've gone in your healing journey, all that work that you've done, one contact from the manipulator can snap you all the way back to ground zero again. If you respond to a Hoover, you are participating in your own demise. You might think that you're standing up for yourself or proving yourself or clearing things up or setting the record straight, but all you're doing is feeding the manipulator and making them stronger while wasting your energy. So a lot of people also ask, when do they ever stop hoovering you? Usually, they will stop when you call them straight out for who they are. If you literally call them right to their face, a manipulator, a narcissist, a sociopath, something like this, or called out their behaviors as manipulation or abuse, by that point, usually they will go away. They have to have no doubt that you are absolutely stone cold and that they are not going to get one more drop of blood out of you. They have to know that. If they think there's a chance that they could get one more drop of blood out, from you, chances are they will hoover you again. So block them anyway, even if you called them out. So I would love for you guys to join us on Inner Integration on Instagram and Facebook for daily content to help you understand and process the weekly YouTube videos like this one. Subscribe to the new Inner Integration podcast. We're on iTunes, we're on Stitcher, that's for Android. You can stream it online. Soon you're going to be able to find us on Mental Health News Radio. They have a network of podcasters that we're joining. And also soon you're going to be able to listen to the Inner Integration podcast or watch the videos on 50 smart TV networks through Binge TV. I'm sending you all a big hug.